Hello and welcome back to this channel. So in today's tutorial, we're going to go ahead and experiment with blend modes in Adobe Fresco. So let's just get started. As usual, we're just not going to experiment with blend modes, but we're going to go ahead and create something using these blend modes. So my idea is to create this recipe card or you could also go ahead and create. Let me just uncheck that this open ended calendar for your planner. These are just a couple of ideas that you could do with this particular tutorial. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to click on create new in here. I'll go into print and I'll click on a four, but I'll make sure it's in the landscape format. If it's not in the landscape format, you can click on this tiny arrow here and switch to landscape and then just click on it. So I have a color palette for you guys. So if you want that color palette, go ahead and download it from the link in the description box below. Once you have downloaded it, let's go ahead and get it into Fresco. So to get those colors into Fresco, all you have to do is click on your images, go to your photos and bring that image in. I'm just going to increase this so that it's going to be easier for me to pick colors. Once you're done, click on done. Your color palette might look a little different and it might not have all these colors because once I'm done with the tutorial, I'm going to pick only the colors that I've chosen or used and then create a separate color palette for you guys. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and add these colors to our palette and you can do that by clicking and holding and this icon will pop up. By the way, for this to work, you should be in one of these brushes. It doesn't matter which one. And once the color gets selected, just make some scribble on your artboard actually. And then you can see that if you go into your colors and into recents, you will see your color over there. So let's go ahead and pick all these colors now. So once you have put all your colors into your recent tab, you can go ahead and click on this I button here to hide the scratches or you can also click delete layer. Now this one, let's just hide it. Let's keep the color palette like that. Okay. All right. So for this illustration, I'm going to be using exclusively vector brushes. Uh, because vector brushes are easy to scale. For example, tomorrow, if you decide that you don't want a four size, but you want it to be smaller or bigger, it's much easier to scale it without actually damaging the quality of the artwork. So let's go ahead and choose the vector brush. And for vector brush, I'm going to use basic round, click outside. And now for the size of your vector brush, you can keep it anything for this stage of the illustration. It really doesn't matter. Okay. So now let's go ahead and choose the color. I'm going to click on my color palette and I'm going to choose this yellow right here. So let's go ahead and make some blobs on this page. Before that, make sure you click on a new layer by clicking on this plus sign here. And I'm just going to go ahead and make some blobs like this and, you know, randomly make them here and there. You can come back and edit it later if you feel like you need more blobs or better blobs. So click on your fill tool and now let's click, click, click and fill it in. Now let's click on a new layer. I'm going to choose a different color now. Let's choose this blue, go back to your vector brush and let's make more marks, but make sure that some of them overlap this yellow. Okay. Because otherwise it won't look nice. And then fill tool, fill, fill, oops, wrong place to fill here and here. Okay. And now we're going to go ahead and experiment with the blend mode to find your blend mode. You can go into these levels here. And in here, you'll see something called as blend mode. The default is set to always normal and you have a multitude of options here. And I know it can be a little intimidating, but the best way to tackle blend mode is to actually experiment with that. So for this one, I could choose anything that I wanted. So if I go ahead and choose things, it immediately shows me how it would look like on the screen. And that is really helpful when you want to choose your particular blend mode. For example, I can't use color burn here. I mean, I could use, but it would just take out everything from the rest of the area. Right. And, uh, okay. I'm kind of liking this linear burn, but let's just go ahead and experiment with this and, aha, uh -huh, lighten. Okay. You know what? I'm going to keep this at linear burn for now. Maybe I'll come back and change it later, but for now let's keep it at linear burn. Okay. Now I'm going to click on a new layer and now I'll use some red. This one that is 359 100 100. I'll go back to my vector brush and I'm going to go ahead and draw some blobs now. 
and let's fill it in okay and this one let's go ahead and change this to let's see I wouldn't keep it darkened because I don't want black on my screen so that's really important even multiply the same thing this one kind of takes everything away linear burn it's creating black so no 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 darker color nothing happens and maybe I will choose screen because screen is one of my favorite settings I don't know this and overlay actually are my favorite settings okay let's keep it an overlay for now okay and we'll come back and experiment with this later on now click on a new layer and let's choose green I want this particular green here that's 118 83 and 63 let's go to our vector brush and oops I can't see the red so I'm gonna go back and put it to normal now okay and let's go back to this layer and make some green okay and fill all of them and let's keep this at let's keep it a linear dodge okay all right so now you kept things at different different things the red is at normal by the way that's okay we'll change it later on now I want to add a background to it and so I'm going to go back into the layer which is the bottommost layer click on a new layer and let me choose this bluish green 162 194 and 80 and I'm going to go into my fill tool and now look at the magic you just remember the colors that you see right now and vector fill and they change all of a sudden so it's not the same colors that you saw right so what we're going to do now is go back into the red layer and I'm going to keep this at lighten because I want it to be much lighter okay and then I'll go into green layer and this one I think linear dodge is fine for this the blue one I want to keep it at lighten it's perfect what did I keep red at oh I'm going to keep the red at screen let it be at screen and the yellow one I'll keep it at normal because that's fine that's good and now we can go ahead and group this so you just click on these three buttons here click on select multiple and select these four things and click on this folder icon to group this the reason I asked you to group this is because you can go ahead and change colors adjust the opacity or do a lot of things as a group for this one what I mean is you can click on this hue saturation and um, contrast go in there and now you can move this slider a little bit towards any direction you want to see that this actually changes the color of the artwork right so let me just go ahead and move it a little bit maybe about minus two you can actually increase the saturation and brightness as well if you want I'm just going to go ahead and keep it at one it it's not necessary but I'm just going to keep it at that okay and then you can do that you can also increase and decrease the brightness and contrast that you see over here if you feel like you need to be more bright or light you can do that as well okay and now what I want to do is I want to reduce the opacity of this because I don't want this so bright right and I'll always go here and then reduce the opacity to a bit less if you want always like that okay and that looks good and so that's what's a blend more magic but wait a minute we are not done yet we still have a little more stuff to do and that is click on a new layer and then we're going to go ahead and click on screen which again is one of my favorites like I told you I'm going to go ahead into my vector brush and I'll choose some darker green maybe this or this maybe this one 160 81 and 32 and now we're going to go ahead and add some designs onto it so it doesn't matter what designs you want to add because it's going to come up like this as a really light one but it looks different on different colors you see that like this so what we're going to do now is go ahead and add some flowers or something like this I'm going to add here as well And you know what I'm going to go ahead and uh, go into my layers maybe increase the opacity back again so that I can see what's what's happening okay let's go into the sketch layer and maybe do that a uh, strawberry or whatever that is that's good and maybe some more here you can actually draw a cacti that 
that. And okay, I'm going to uncheck this so that you guys can see what's happening. Okay, or maybe let's turn this into normal so that you can see what's happening. And then maybe round. No, let me make a balloon. So these are really rough sketches. Go ahead and draw rough sketches itself because it it gives a very nice effect for your artwork or your illustration. You see how rough my sketches are. Okay, so I'll go back into screen mode and turn this back on and you can see that it has created some really nice effect. So you can go back here and reduce the opacity of the layer beneath just so that you have much more, I don't know, space to work with your artwork. Okay, so that's about blend mode. So we kind of experimented with things. You can go ahead and try this out. So every little thing will give you a different effect. So color dodge, you can go ahead and lighten. You see what's happening behind soft light, vivid light. There's so many different things that you can do. So go ahead and experiment a little bit and each color will give you a different effect. And also the color beneath it, if it's different, it gives a very different effect. For example, in this one, I will choose to fill and I will choose some, wait a minute, this light yellow and maybe fill it up. And you see how different even this one turned out. See, it's bluish now, it becomes yellowish. So go ahead and experiment with this a little bit until you find the perfect background for your recipe card or your calendar. Okay, so now let's go ahead and design the rest of the artwork. That is, I'm just going to go back here, click on the top of all these layers because we need a fresh layer. And I'm going to go ahead and select some white. Click and hold on this until you get this option and click on square. Okay, so now for the recipe card, we're going to have two sections that is ingredients and then the method. And on the top here, we're going to put the space for, you know, like the name of the recipe, the time it saves, it takes to make it and uh, number of people it serves. So I'm just going to go ahead and increase this size here like that. Maybe put this a little bit and a little bit. Once you have it, you're on fill tool, click with vector fill. Now move this. A little bit here we're gonna go ahead and increase this size fill and decrease this size move this up here maybe increase this a little bit fill once you're done you can just click back here and everything will go away oh wait a minute there's a lot of gap in here if you want go ahead and adjust it I'm not gonna do that all right so I'm just going to click on levels here and decrease your opacity a little bit so that you know you can see your design through your white spaces that you have created for text okay now let's go ahead and add some lines to this so that it's easier to write things in so i'm just going to click on a new layer and i'm going to go ahead and click on clipping mask because i don't want the lines to cross these white blocks okay so for that i'm going to go ahead and choose my vector brush and one thing you should know about the vector brush that we have chosen is let me go ahead and check the brush so i'm going to add a bit of pressure oops white let's take some black okay i'm gonna add a bit of pressure and little pressure and see what's happening so this brush is pressure sensitive so i'm going to go into levels here and i'm just going to see ah there you go pressure dynamics i'm just going to turn that off now if i draw it's uniform width pressure no pressure doesn't matter and that's what you want okay go ahead and change that setting Let's look at the line. It's too thick. I'm going to reduce this. You can click and hold. It gives you this keypad and maybe make this 10. Click outside and let's look at it. Okay, I think it should be okay. Mm -hmm. Now click and hold and let's go and select the ruler. And obviously it comes like this. Use your two fingers to click and rotate it so that you see that angle in the center. It becomes zero degree. That is really important. Okay, it should be zero degrees. I hope you could see that. I'll use my two fingers like this. Okay, you see, it's zero degrees. It snaps, so it's easy to figure out. Make sure it's zero degrees, click here. Okay, let's go ahead and leave some gap on the top to 
write your heading and come back down a bit and then click and drag and go down again that's too thick actually i'm just going to go back and undo that use your two finger tap to undo and reduce this to about five let's see that okay that's okay now and you can go down like this and then make some lines And once you're halfway, you don't have to actually make more lines. You can just go ahead, click and duplicate layer, It'll create a new layer and click and then bring this down so that you have things like this and click on done. And if you have in the end, you can go ahead and draw one more. You just don't have to do everything, you know, now click and click on merge down so that it gets merged with the other line so that now it is a single layer by the way you can make this into a grid as well you can just click and duplicate layer and now click on transform and go ahead and use this one to rotate this 90 degree you see the angle right in the center that's perfect we're gonna go ahead and place it over here like that and then click on done you can actually duplicate this again click on transform and bring it all the way like this done and you can again duplicate it and transform and then move it so that you have a nice grid ready click on done there's a double one over there so i'm just gonna undo that and try again done okay that looks good so now we have to delete these excess things but good news since you've used vector you can use the vector trim option so i'm just going to double click on this and click again so that it goes into the outer layer but before that i have to merge all the lines so click and merge down click merge down click merge down so all the lines are in one single layer now now i just have to do this and it kind of get rid gets rid of the excess lines that I have okay so something like that I can actually do that here oh, here as well there you go and if you want you can actually get rid of these as well oh that was a little bit inside but yeah you get what's done right and then you can click on this and reduce the opacity a little bit or a little too much so that it's nice grid option you can actually make it into a lines as well like you don't have to do it as a grid you can do it as simple lines it's it's totally up to you okay so let's go ahead and add some text right now so click on your text tool and click and click on your keyboard and first of all we're going to make it as a recipe or recipes and let's go ahead and click again so that it's selected for this one i have a special font called as wreath so i'm going to choose that and i'll increase the size by doing this i'm going to place it in the corner and make sure it's big and bold and nice okay and it's going to be black obviously and then i'm going to go ahead and click on a new layer and choose text again and click and keyboard and this will be from my mom's kitchen let's select that and make this really tiny and place it here and of course i want a different uh, font this is not what i want so i want poppins and i'm going to use poppins light and uh, i will obviously reduce the size to fit in here like that okay and i'll go back into recipes layer so when you just have to click on the layer and automatically selects that we can increase this and place it right above that okay that's cool so now click again so that you have a new layer go ahead and write ingredients and click and let's go ahead and place it here what am i doing something wrong okay place it there and i want this to be pop in semi bold so by the way you can go ahead to any of these um 
fonts. And if you see this tiny arrow here, just click on that and it gives you all of the options that you have for that particular font. Okay. So regular light or whatever. So I'm just going to go ahead and go into Poppins. Click on that and I want semi bold. No, I think I'll keep regular. Okay. Regular is fine. And maybe increase the size a little bit and place it here a little bit. Okay, the size is set to about 18 point something. And I'm going to click and duplicate this because I want the same setting over here. So click and drag and bring it over here. And now click on the keyboard and write instructions or method. Let's do method. Click and I'm going to go ahead and go out of this and make sure it's in the center. Once you're done, you can go ahead and click on a new layer. Now let's add some tiny bits here. So let's go ahead and click and click now let me call this name now i'll click on a new layer and click and i'll say serves and then again new layer click okay like that okay let's go here and now i'm going to go ahead and put this over here let's go to the serve section careful when you move this okay name let's keep this here and i want cook time to be make sure you're all nicely arranged it's okay cook time a little bit down because if the name is too big then it's perfect right okay and now let's go ahead and click on a new layer and we're gonna add some lines so click on your ruler you go ahead and bring this in like this and make sure it's nicely placed like that and go to your list and then let's go ahead and check that okay then go to your name and go ahead and make a line like that and then click on it and then you're done okay so that's pretty simple isn't it so you have created your recipe card so let me show you how you can make a calendar with this that's also very very simple now let me go ahead and choose everything that constitutes this recipe card that is click and select multiple and I'm going to choose everything. Click on folder and click on I button to remove all those things. Okay. And then I feel like I want some different color for this. So I'm just going to click on this again. You can click here and click on this layers. And I'm going to go ahead and maybe make this bluish, more bluish kind. And then click on a new layer. And now we're going to go ahead and make this into a calendar. We need seven days of a week. So there's seven columns and then about five rows. Although some months may have six, but we're just going to stick to five. Okay. And again, you can use your ruler to make this. And when you're making this one, make sure that you put the lines all the way out. What I mean is I'm going to start over here like that. If you're worried about not having equally spaced lines, what you can do is you can turn on the grid setting. Uh, you can go ahead and click on this icon here and then turn on the grid. And then uh, now you can set this to any number you want. And um, then you can just draw the lines based on the grid and it will make sure that, you know, all your lines are equally spaced. And I think it can be a bit bigger. So I'm going to click on my tool here and increase this that looks good and click on done and now i want the vertical one so i'm just going to go ahead and rotate it and keep this over here in the corner and make sure you cross the lines what I mean is go ahead out of the line like this that's really important otherwise you won't be able to cut them off using the tool okay so I want a little gap here like that and then maybe here I'll tell you why exactly I'm making a tiny note thing okay once you're done click on ruler here so that it goes away and now let's go ahead and double click and click again so that you get this outer ring thing and all you have to do is go ahead and erase this off like that how cool is this tool I mean like whoever thought about it is like a genius let me tell you and I want these lines to be gone as well, like that. And this is the reason I told you to go outside the line so that it's much easier. 
otherwise actually the vector trimming won't work okay so you can remove these lines as well wasn't that super simple and easy to make that was amazing wasn't it okay so now click on a new layer and now you can add the white bits to it that is so that you can see your text kind of thing so go ahead and use the white color and um, uncheck that and now i'm going to go ahead and add some white bits here i'm just adding roughly so that you can see it like this okay and you can go ahead and add bits here as well so i'm going to keep this here first and then add this let me add for all five of this because then you can just duplicate it right oh i made it in the same layer as this okay okay no problem you can just use your selection tool click and select this close lasso because it needs to be closed and then click cut selection and then click and paste selection it will paste it on a different layer so we are good to go now so we are here that is with these boxes click and duplicate layer click on your selection tool or transform tool go ahead and do it this way and click on done then again now i'm going to go ahead and merge these two merge down so that there are two of them like this i'm going to keep this one single because there are odd numbers so duplicate this now done now i'm going to merge all these down even this white thing everything all of these okay and now we can go ahead and reduce the opacity and on the top we can actually make um thing like this no not on that layer click on new layer you can do it on that layer as well it doesn't matter fill it you can reduce the opacity so that's it you can add your monday tuesday and wednesday like as a text again um maybe black and click and monday no just add you can add monday tuesday wednesday and so on and so forth and in here you can add notes and you can actually add lines to this as well and when you're adding lines you can just make sure that you go here to the layer which has these white parts click on new layer and create a clipping mask and then you add lines you can actually add lines by clicking and holding and they'll snap into a straight line as well okay so you could do that as well if you're feeling lazy and don't want to use the ruler but this won't come out as nice and equally spaced as your ruler so i would highly recommend using that instead okay so i'm going to select everything that is select multiple click on folder and check like that and i'm going to go ahead and choose the recipe card now you can double click to go inside and change any setting that you want to change and once you're fully satisfied with everything you can click on this share button here publish and export export as and can export it as a png or even pdf because if that's what you're trying to create you can use it as a pdf okay that's it that brings us to the end of this tutorial and i hope you liked it if you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that notification bell and the subscribe button. If you want to support this channel, you can always buy me a coffee at coffee.com. The link to do that is in the description box below. If you create something using one of my tutorials, don't forget to tag me. That is at print me some color or at thing beyond color on Instagram. Okay, I guess I'll see you in the next video then. Bye bye.